So one of the things you run into when you're doing uh, collision repair is uh, secondary damage. And this can be a uh, part came off of one of the vehicles, one of the cars, one of the trucks, and damaged another part of the car. Um, sometimes it's parts that are still attached to the vehicle and they damage something that normally you wouldn't even think of. So uh, in the case of this Mustang, uh, I have secondary damage that I actually just discovered. I was getting getting it all prepped to put my uh, used inner, this is called a, a fender apron. So I'm getting ready to put my used, gently used but not used up uh, fender apron in. And I was just kind of fine-tuning everything before I, you know, have to fix cogged up stuff like that. But um, I was down here and you noticed, uh, I don't know if I showed anybody, but this had a kink underneath the battery box that had to be heated up and, and straightened up so that it wasn't kinked anymore and twisted. And that was part of what was keeping my frame kind of kicked in a little bit, is that it was kinked right here. So what I did is I put pressure over here with uh, my friction jack and heated this section, heated that section up there with uh, just a propane torch uh, just to get it nice and hot. And then uh, using the pressure over here, which helps relieve some of the stress over there, uh, I used a hammer and dolly and kind of worked that spot. Um, and I didn't have a light sitting right here the way I do right now. And one thing I discovered is the spring, when this car got into the wreck, the spring actually, and I believe he told me this at the time, he had to replace his uh, lower control arm because it was broken, which makes me believe that the strut was probably damaged too. But he had to replace that because it was broken. Well, this is what happens when something like that breaks, and this is called secondary damage. If you can see it, I know it's upside down, it's kind of hard to see, but it's actually dented in this way. And, that, and if you go underneath here, you can see, I'm gonna get a light here. You can see right where the spring hit. So imagine this car's got, this car's sitting down. He's hit his brakes. So the springs, so when you hit your brakes, of course your front end's gonna come down and it compressed the spring and made a perfect spring-shaped dent in the spring pocket here, in the uh, uh, inner wheel well. So I discovered that. I, I guess I wasn't even paying attention. And then I was like, wow, that's kind of weird. So then I went over to the other side and checked, and sure enough, it's it's not dented like that. So I went ahead and I started hammering that out to get that to look the way it's supposed to. Uh, but that's just an example of secondary damage that you can discover on a vehicle that, you know, if this thing had inner wheel liners, um, the plastic covers that go inside your, your fenders for dirt and dust and all that stuff, um, there's a good chance you probably wouldn't have even seen this uh, until you started really tearing the car apart. So just a, a heads up to look out for stuff like that, like secondary damage type stuff that that can happen when, when you're working on a, a damaged car. Um, I'm gonna keep filming so that I can show. I'm basically just kind of using a hammer. Just a ball peen hammer, nothing special. And I'm trying to make it so that 
light stays up there somehow. I might have to get that up. It's actually pretty thick steel. I mean, you can see right here. You can see right here, it's a pretty thick chunk of steel. So I may have to heat that up a little bit. And, or get a bigger hammer. I'll just get a bigger hammer. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about the same size. Let's see if I can use my better hammer. Seems to be moving it. Slow but steady. A little bit better. Doesn't feel quite so bad inside the inner wheel well there. It's good to really discover this stuff before you start doing any of your welding because any anything that you're moving over here could potentially affect your geometry of your like especially for here for like your engine compartment and stuff like that So it feels pretty good right there. Got a little bit of a lip right there. I don't know if I can... It's actually feeling pretty good. right there. It's actually feeling pretty good now. Mostly gotten at just with cold hammer. See if you can see it's still got a little bit of a whoop right there, but that actually all feels pretty good. I probably need to get in there and hammer. I've kind of dented this in just a touch. I probably need to get in there and hammer that out just a touch, but all in all I think it's gonna be okay. See if I can get in there with anything. Mm. More than likely not. Yeah. Let's see if I can just kind of move it a little bit with my chisel hammer. Yeah, that did it. A little bit right there. Kind of glancing blows there, but that actually feels pretty good. Let's 
see if I can get the last little bit out of there. I think that does it. See, it looks pretty good in there now. You can see that kink was right through here. And generally, you get a good kink like that, especially in structural steel, and <clears throat> you'll definitely need to heat that up and get that to, to move right and lay down right, because otherwise that kink, it'll, like if the car ever gets into another wreck, it'll it'll actually break, because you're, you're, when you're moving metal that's already moved like that, you're work hardening it, so the only way to get rid of that that temper that it's been worked into the metal is to heat it up and then that's what will get you to to move that and not work hard in it like that that little bit that we did here that's not a big deal that you can just move cold and it doesn't cause any issues but that kind of stuff that definitely will and I'm sure there's a few that think that I should have replaced like a section of this just to make that look better. And the reason I didn't is because when it comes to unibody cars, in order for them to react the way that they're supposed to react, when they're in a wreck is to replace the entire panel. If you start replacing just sections of a unibody uh, frame, you've now compromised how that car is going to act if it ever gets into another car accident. So sectioning, they would call that sectioning and sectioning, um, generally that's frowned on and uh, you, I've seen I've seen guys that will try to section and they'll put a sleeve in and try to weld around the sleeve and years past that was kind of a that was kind of a thing um, but not that's not a good repair and I wouldn't suggest anybody do a repair on a unibody car like that because it's just you've compromised the the structural design of the car that way so uh like like spots like this this is all part of the crumple zone of your car so if you compromise that you cut say you cut this off and then you know weld the section in right here well now this section isn't going to act the same because even if you've welded that and you've added sheet metal to that that cut when you grind it smooth you weaken along each side of that weld even if you're not trying to even if you're doing everything you can to make that as smooth and, and one piece and flawless as possible you've weakened both sides of that weld by thinning the sheet metal when you grind it 
it's in a, you can't avoid it. So the only way to have a good quality repair on a unibody car is to replace the entire section. So if I have, you know, if this, if I was going to replace this upper rail cover, I would have to replace this entire upper rail cover all the way back. And it comes all the way back underneath the, the hood hinge and it comes all the way down. I would have to replace this entire piece. And same thing with, you know, your uh, front apron, which I got from the junkyard. Um, uh, if you check my channel, you'll see I, I have a, a junkyard trip video where I cut that piece off. Um, you you want to replace the whole thing. You don't want to just try to add and, you know, have some welds holding different pieces of that together. That's never going to be a great uh, repair. You you want to, I mean, you're, you're already going through doing it. Do it right, and you'll have a much better outcome. It'll look a lot better. If you like my videos and you like what I do and you want to see more content from me, uh, like and subscribe and uh, set up notifications so that when I post a new video, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching. So when you're doing this, it's always a good idea to, you know, if you have bolt on panels to check your fit. Um, with this one, the adjustment holes for your your bolts and stuff are really really precise so they're really small there's not much adjustment there not like the old cars used to used to have you know a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch of adjustment these new cars they're pretty much bolt right on and they should fit so I've taken and uh, set the fender on there and put my bolts in uh, it doesn't matter that it's not fit quite perfect at the, the door because uh, I have a fender mount. There's a fender mount right here on an inside that you adjust with that. So other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think we're going to be okay with that. Um, I'm not happy with this hood, so the hood's going to definitely need to get some adjustment done to it. I'm probably gonna do, I've already cut it once. I'm probably gonna have to trim it a little bit more just to get a good gap. But that's what happens when you get an aftermarket fiberglass hood that's not that great a quality. But everything else seems to bolt up good. I got my bolt right here. A lot of times, sometimes you just put a little bit of pressure on it and it'll sit right in there, right? Um, everything looks good. I think I'm ready to weld that panel in and get, uh, get the ball rolling. Okay, so I got my inner apron, my used inner apron in. It seems to fit pretty good. I think with uh, manufacturing tolerances and the fact that this apron came from a different year car, I'm going to get some variation on uh, where the original spot welds were. Um, I think this is pretty close. Um, I can see right there that that's actually just a touch high. So I'm going to push that down. But I think I've got a pretty good... I think i got a pretty good set up here. Uh, I have a pretty good fit around the uh, shock strut section there. And I have a pretty good fit up against here. Again, like I said, with manufacturing tolerances and changes, um, from the different years, you're gonna have a little bit of that where it's not gonna maybe quite match up perfectly. But this, I can definitely address and get that to sit down just a little bit more. As you can see, it's a little high for the spot welds. Spot welds, these, these are probably done by a robot. I know most of the uh, 
body shops in car factories are all robotic, all automated. So they're going to be, they should be pretty close to being in the same spot. So if you drilled out spot welds from a used panel and you're trying to put up uh, that panel to your, your car or the car you're working on, um, wh whatever spot welds you've drilled out, they should be pretty close. They should come pretty close to matching up. Uh, again, this part here came from, I think, a 2005 Mustang. And this is a 2006, so there's a chance that they've adjusted spot well positions in this area for one reason or another. Um, or it could just simply be the fact that uh, a robot broke and they had to put a new robot in and they uh, had to tweak the programming a little bit. And that's what would happen. Uh, a lot of times uh, design changes come in after a car is being manufactured and they will change slightly where spot welds will land uh, from different uh, year of the same model car or truck. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe the spot weld up on this spot just up a little bit further uh, this car performs slightly different in a crash. Same with this spot weld right here, where it's actually up a little bit from where this is at. Um, it could have just been simply that, you know, hey, you know, if, if we move the spot weld three millimeters, it does this in a crash. I, you know, I, that, that's above my pay scale. So, um, or it just simply could be the fact that they were having problems uh, running the robot with the spot welds this close together. Uh, maybe they were getting some warpage or something like that. So they, they spread the, the spot weld out a little bit further just to, to stop warpage or, you know, whatever manufacturing issue they were having. Um, it could be any number of things. Anyways, uh, I got it sitting in there. It looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust uh, this down just a little bit because I still think it's just a little high. Uh, I'm using uh, sheet metal screws to hold it all together right now. Uh, you can see the end of that one right there. And then I got one up in here. I got two over here. Um, the uh, This car did have some minor accident damage. You can see it up in there. Um, and it looks like this is where it was originally it was sitting there because it had a pretty good bend in it right there i'm going to start tack welding in I do adjust my heat settings and speed settings.
I have my headphones on and I'm talking really loud but I gotta have my headphones on because just sitting here it's not good enough so I play my play my audiobook 